Sit down, Waldo. Hi, everyone. It's your boy, Zach. I think I have to amend uh, my uh, uh, rules for myself. At the beginning of the year, I said that I had seven late books, so I was going to stop videos, and then every book, late book, I got out, I would unlock one day per week. Um, that was enormously successful uh, for me getting caught up on work. The problem is I'm caught up now. <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, I got caught up on 95% of my stuff I needed to do like two weeks ago. And now it's been like one thing per day. And now like the one thing per day is wait for a response to the email I sent two days ago. I'm basically caught up on everything, uh, not to throw anyone under the bus since all of these people have waited months or years for me to do things in some cases, but now I'm in the situation where I send off an email and then I just kind of wait a couple days or up to a week to for the next step to happen. So um, yeah, I think I'm probably going to start doing, I just have little things to do like um, I just got the uh, the poster from Sashi for Jawbreaker's contingency, actually. Um, and uh, so I got to review that. I got to write the the copy, the text for the back of uh, the next few books. And that's really it. That's like totally caught up and that doesn't even need to be done today. That can be done over the next week. So I basically got like one task per day to do. So, um, here it is. <laughs> I'm not completely uh, changing that, um, but I'm just saying there's there's not a lot of work for me to do. In fact, like the last week has basically been just sending off emails and just waiting for responses. Um, before I start, first kill graphic novel link is in the description. I got some great suggestions. I think probably about 20. Uh, I have about 36 here. And I was saying that, um, uh, <laughs> well, I sent I sent it to Wes so you can see that this is the last uh, cell he was looking at. Uh, but I sent it out to a few friends and then I also asked people to give suggestions um, in the comments. Uh, when I first started this, nobody really got it. They thought it was just petty grievances. I was like, no, these are inflection points. These are points in time. If you had a time machine, you would go back to because the the timeline changed uh, the collapsed industry we have now is due to um well it's not due to mark millar getting a netflix deal but it is due in part to the jealousy that abounded because of that even things like uh uh okay frank cho quits wonder woman after being harassed by stealth editor greg rucka and you're like okay so he leaves a book but what that led to was approved body type. Frank Cho had drawn essentially the haunch, like the side of the hip butt area. And male feminist Greg Rucka had a problem with that. And he had negotiated to essentially be a stealth editor for the book. He had veto power that Frank Cho didn't know about when he signed on. Almost 10 years ago, you think it doesn't really have any repercussions but we still have the bland uh mild approved body type for almost all female characters to this day so um i did a, a video uh yesterday about how the victory over cancel culture is unlike anything we ever dreamed of i mean i think the dream was vague it was just like can you stop? <laughs> like, there, there wasn't great hopes for uh, reclaiming lost tribal lands. It was just like, can you stop? Like, just, just stop. Um, but it's even better. Not only have they stopped, but they are now rebranding themselves to be like trad wives, essentially. Um, they are rewriting their own history. And in some cases, they're just leaving. Why are they leaving? Well, it's because they don't want to exist in a post-cancel culture industry. Um, so we get uh, Joe Glass here says, 
kind of considering writing an article about why I'm quitting comics and generally can no longer in good faith stand behind the maxim, how do you break into comics? Just make comics. Dunno though, because it might be hella personal. This is like a 40 year old man <laughs> and burn a lot of bridges. So uh, he says like, uh, I am far from the first one uh, who's talked about packing in comics in the face of this industry and sorry to say won't likely be the last uh let's uh the funny thing is a lot of these people i have seen join in on dozens of digital lynch mobs over uh the last few days then we get uh old vidayala <laughs> geopolitical expert vidayala you know when discussing the most complicated political controversy possibly in human existence i always go for the most learning disabled person <laughs> so both uh danny lore and vita ayala when all of their work disappeared because companies need to make money they can't just hire retards for uh pr purposes they both rebranded themselves as israel palestine <laughs> experts and uh, so this guy, uh, Daniel uh, Colbin. Uh, so uh, when I have on this uh, downfall of the American comic book industry, I put a link for context. And um, most of these links have a comments section at the bottom. And I mean, there are these three shitheads. It, they all remind me of uh, Waldo from the Van Halen uh, video. <laughs> Um, so, uh, it's Daniel Colbin, Andrew Farago, and Nick Hanover. They all look the same. If I say nerd, like 1980s nerd, they all look like that. They're all, I think, uh, they've all been around forever, but like, you have to like think about what they do. Some of them are indie writers. Uh, one of them runs a comics museum. I forget what the other one does, but like every single Digital lynch mob controversy. These cry bully nerds are in there just making things worse for everyone. So Daniel Colbin does like the one thing. What what do these people have? What what, what is the ammunition? You're a Nazi. <laughs> so uh, he started saying that um, uh, or retweeting and then uh, rubber stamping that uh, Danny and um, uh, Vita are anti-semitic first of all you can't generally be something that you can't spell uh danny lore seems to have some sort of viral infection in her brain vita is retarded and i've gotten flack for that but it's funny if i say frank miller is retarded nobody's offended if i say gail simone is retarded nobody's offended if i say vita ayala is retarded people say that's mean because she is. She's learning disabled. She's slow. She's an imbecile, as is Danny Lore. So accusing them of being anti-Semitic. <laughs> and they'd probably be like, I'm not anti-Semitic. I love toaster strudel. And you're like, Danny, it's not, it's not anti-cinnamon. It's whatever. <laughs> Uh, they should use the length of the buses that Danny and Vita uh, rode to school as a unit of measure. It's like, uh, how long of a plank of wood would you like us to cut for you at Home Depot? It's like um, six uh, Danny Vita buses. Oh, okay. It's a reasonable. It's not too much. Um, but uh, anyway... Um, so this guy started uh, retweeting accusations that they are anti-Zionists, and then he forgot the progressive stack, which I always imagine as like a totem pole. So the progressive stack is like, these are the most marginalized, but in media, these are the most privileged. So you want to, you want to, you want to be autistic, you want to be gay, you want to be trans, you want to be not white, not cis. So uh danny and vita are way at the top of that with uh ms t franklin uh daniel colbin who i believe is only jewish and gay 
very far below them. He's not... It's like a rank system, like in the military. A corporal doesn't get to call out a colonel. And uh, in the diversity of forces, Vida Ayala is a four-star general. So now he's, uh, he's contritely uh, apologizing, feeling a bit outside looking in, in comics lately. Dunno. <laughs> is Dunno... The is is Dunno the folks now? That's the second Dunno. <laughs> Dunno if my opinions have turned people off, or if I'm just not one of quote the cool kids, or it's the algorithm messing with me. Still making comics, just feeling a bit out of sorts. <laughs> right now, I want to crawl into a hole and pull it in after me. <laughs> <laughs> Save some drama for the rest of us. Uh, so uh, then he says, I made a mistake. I own up to it. I'm going to try to repair the damage where I can. I just ask for some patience and some grace. This guy has been calling everyone a Nazi over nothing for a decade. But he made a mistake. He did it to someone above him on the progressive stack. And he is now reaping the cancel pig whirlwind um and then he goes on i am from a proud jewish family my faith and heritage guides my life and my writing my zeal is to protect any and all jews from harm coupled with my own experience blah, 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 blah. okay uh, cloud my judgment okay so two learning disabled lesbians don't have the ability to harm any jewish people they literally can barely read um, so what this is with him talking about, oh, maybe I should leave. Maybe I should crawl into a hole. <laughs> this is a grown man. Um, and, and, and this passive aggressive is like, hey, I'm thinking of leaving. Like, why don't you just put together a bindle? <laughs> the, the stick with the handkerchief that the, uh, the hobos used to. <laughs> I'm running away from home. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Fucking hilarious. Oh my God, I've got tears in my eyes. But the reality is these people were never really in comics in any way that you would understand. Uh, Joe Glass is kind of trying to say that he's really been trying and it's just too much, but he's, he's always been failing. He's never made enough money to justify. I mean, he's, he's, he's doing the, uh, the brag and beg, or what do they call it? The beg seg, uh, that mags visaggio. Oh, I'm so great. Comics is doing amazing. Oh, I'm having trouble paying the rent. Well, it's July, and that's the seventh time you've had trouble paying the rent this year, Joe. It's, it's every single month. He has never remotely made any type of money to justify still trying to be in the industry. But what he had was influence. He started off as a corrupt journalist for Bleeding Cool. I know that seems redundant, but... Um, does anyone remember Dandelion Boy? He wasn't corrupt. He was just fluffy. <laughs> That's some very ancient lore from this channel. He was a guy who had like fluffy hair. And he, he wasn't really that bad. But I just started jokingly calling him Dandelion Boy. And then Joe Glass, because he didn't like the other criticisms I had for the industry, um, started uh, falsely reporting my YouTube channel. And then, since he's an idiot, he got two out of three strikes against my channel, reporting uh, on behest of someone else, which is not how you can get a strike. It has to be the person spoken about. They have to make the compliment or the, the complaint. Uh, Dandelion Boy was most likely skipping or traipsing through a field of clover, tall grass, uh, whatever people like dandelion boy do in their free time uh although maybe that's his occupation it's like we got this field and nobody is frolicking in it at all but anyway so then since he's an idiot <laughs> he started contacting youtube support on twitter saying like hey i can't get this third strike through and then i was able to call and say hey yeah this idiot is trying to get my channel taken down he's not the person that I talked about, it was just a joke. But 
what people like Joe Glass had and Daniel Colbin. Daniel Colbin, Nick Hanover, uh, Andrew Farago. Remember how I've talked about how like uh, Joe Casada was joining in on a digital lynch mob, and like he would just be like, "What about this? What about this? What about this?" It's well because these attack dogs, these Waldos, uh, and other of the twelve psychos, these creeps would spend an entire weekend manually scrolling through thousands of tweets going back ten years for uh, like four out of context rude tweets and then they would provide them to Gail Simone or Joe Casada or whoever and they felt like they were in the club but they're just a crazy person doing free work for other people um, but they would get out of boys out of girls out of they thems from people they heard of and they felt kind of famous um, they would go to conventions and they would get invited because they were diverse and uh I always uh, kind of laugh. Uh, they actually reversed the angle to take photos. It used to be you would go to, and I saw Eric July do this. He was at a, a, a panel at a recent convention. He took the picture from his point of view to show a full audience. Joe Glass, Heather Antos, Mag Sasagio, when they go to a convention, almost every time, it is a photo of them. So you never get to see that like nobody is talking to them. But Joe Glass was the type of guy. The entire Krakoa age, after Hox Pox, the initial miniseries, was meant to appeal to Joe Glass. It was effeminate. It was gay. Um, Vidal as well. All of these people. They absolutely loved it because it was the most like them. It was uh, vaguely queer sexual people just hanging about not even frolicking like dandelion boy would do um i've heard he's still frolicking to this day <laughs> um whatever happened to him he used to write for bleeding cool and then he was just gone uh i guess he needed more than 20 dollars uh but anyway um so also this other guy who's popped up a million times uh mario candelaria the other one because there's an actor named that um, when they look at a comic book industry where cancel culture is no longer encouraged, supported, lauded, they say, I would rather not be in the industry. And these people were all just barely hanging on. Um, mainly they were in the industry in just that they went to conventions and they were on Twitter attacking people all the time. When it goes out, like pheromones from a, those communication pheromones that ants give each other when it goes out it's like hey cancel culture is, is is not cool anymore we gotta make money they go i would rather die i would rather leave than stay in an industry where i'm not applauded for joining or starting digital lynch mobs that are meant to drive people to suicide uh vita ayala was not gracious in her victory over uh cry bully uh daniel colbin not for nothing, but when you go from all but calling Nadia anti-Semitic, she is. <laughs> oh, God, she is. Danny Lore Vita Ayala, they don't know what that word means exactly. They don't know what any words mean exactly. Nadia does. Nadia is 100% anti-Semitic. Very proudly so. Not for nothing, but when you go from all but calling Nadia anti-Semitic, to gleefully agreeing with an account calling Danny and I terrorists and lying about us, I very much side-eye which accounts are following you. Even more mutuals with this person, and he is regularly like this. Last I'll say on this, but please look at the screen. This is a 40-year-old retarded woman, and this is how she expresses herself. Last I'll say on this, but Uno Reversi accusing a black or brown person of racism or anti-Semitism for describing the racism they experience is the textbook bigot behavior. And reaching for that first tells me everything I need to know about who you are. I see you. This was, of course, voice to text because Danny doesn't, or Vita doesn't know how to spell. Um, 
One of my favorite things a friend says is when I will be getting up in arms about something one of these retards says is like, you're assuming she knows what that means. And I, I keep making that mistake, but I try not to. So anyway, uh, if you were busy, uh, Vita Ayala's retard. Uh, there's a bunch of bullies in every message board going back the last 10 years. They all look like Waldo from the uh, Van Halen video. And uh, Joe Glass is leaving or pretending to leave the industry because he just doesn't see a future if he can't at least try to get people to kill themselves. I mean, where's the fun? Um, but uh, anyway, before I go, uh, I'm going to go do a couple things and probably be done with all my work that I can do today by noon. And then I'll work on this uh, downfall of the American comic book industry. I want to eventually make this into an infographic print, uh, high quality, sell it, and the profit will go, go to charity. Um, now, <laughs> I say I will try to make it go to charity because creeps like this guy, they are the type to contact a charity and intimidate them out of taking money. But I also think that era is probably over. Um, I don't think, I think they would just be like, dude, it's not 2018. We're taking the money. Um, so thanks to everyone who has, uh, sent in, uh, suggestions for this list. I think I can easily get it to 60. I think about 50 or 60 is perfect. If you get too many, um, uh, then the, the poster, the infographic will be too crowded. But also again, these are supposed to be inflection points, pivotal moments in comic book history. It's not just Tony Isabella saying something cringe. Um, before I go. First Kill graphic novel. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.